Gun is up. And they're off. Start of the 10. This is the men's race. 10,000 meters at the Brickyard. After that woman's 10K, I'm fired up. I'm fired up, too. This is going to be one for the history books, I think. And you got Evan Jagger out front there. Charging into the darkness. And Sean McGordy on his heels. Looks like Mad Mark Scott is getting right in there in the armchair <laughs> Mad spot. Mark Scott. Mad Mark Scott on fire now. He's on a tear this season. Oh! And the elder statesman, Chris Derrick. <laughs> yeah, elder states. He's always seemed like an elder statesman because <laughs> he's wise beyond, beyond his years. He is, he is quite wise. He's got the facts. I think the, the wisdom will show in today's race. Absolutely. And right behind him, you've got Ben True. The Dartmouth grad, and he's an elder statesman in this sport as well. Ben True of uh, of Hanover, New Hampshire, originally. We have two Ivy Leaguers in this race, so there's a race within the race. <laughs> the the Ivy League gentlemen. You've got Kieran Huntevate from Harvard, the Crimson, versus Ben True. The Dartmouth grad and the first lap passed here in 66 seconds. So that's a, a very solid pace for 10,000 meters. So they're looking 65.9 is 27.28 pace, and that's the Olympic standard. So 66 seconds, they're right on it. And you got King Chez sitting there back in 7th place, right in front of Woody Kincaid, and then Grant Fisher in the back. And that's Mad Mark Scott in 3rd, along with Chris Derrick, and then Ben True, and then Grant Fisher. Now, Woody, Woody Kincaid, as you all know, he's the king monster of the forest in 2019. The man surprised Lopez Lemong and Matthew Centrowitz in the 5,000 in the forest, and he ran 12.58. That put him fifth all time on the American 5,000 meter list. And uh, and I would say that like you know he was he was a heavy underdog in that race and surprised a lot of people with that victory in the forest. Yeah, so I, he, I think he definitely surprised more than the two that were competing against him. <laughs> <laughs> he, he surprised the large crowd that evening. Yeah, gathered in the forest to witness that historic event. Uh, so you can't count the man out. I mean, Woody, he's got, he's got minimal knee drive, uh, <laughs> but for he's run three thirty-seven for fifteen hundred meters with that minimal knee drive. And I like to think that in boxing parlance, Woody has a strong chin. I think he could take a lot of hits in a race, and then he could still come back and kick down strong. So you never, you never really know with Woody. You can't count him out. And those he's are sitting, the qualities of a good 10k runner. Those are. That's toughness. That's mm -hmm. what Elise Cranny has. Yep. And that might be what Woody Kincaid has. But you've got the red lightning here strung out. Four man up front. And then you've got Ben True. And there's a few, a few rogue individuals in the pack. Like the King, who's right behind Grant Fisher. And then Reed Buchanan, University of Portland pilot, at the back of the pack. So we got a little UP action in here. We got, we got a little... Woody and Reed. That's right. Two UP athletes, the purple people eaters. <laughs> Is Yo, that what they're called? I think so. A pilot's life for me. <laughs> and they're coming up on 1,600 meters here. Evan Jagger still out front leading his teammates. And like we said, you could still put into this purse. You could still build this purse up. And who knows, maybe... Maybe Mark Scott, maybe the King, maybe Ben True is going to hear that. They're going to step on the gas a little bit. They're going to grit their teeth, grind it a little harder in the brickyard for that <laughs> catch. Elise is probably shouting at them. She's excited. Man, yeah, Elise is probably making it rain right now in the field. <laughs> yeah. 424 for the mile. That's 66 is per lap. So they're, they're a hair, the tiniest hair possible. Uh, definitely not one of Woody Kincaid's hair. Uh, right, right over the Olympic mark. So 27, 28, 65 nines. So they're, I want to say that they're probably 27, 29 pace right now. We've got a 
we got a lot of time. We've got a lot of kickers in this race. So that we, is true too. We've a got a lot of 1500 meter speed, which is what we saw. Won that. that speed won the prevailed. Race. Yeah. Speed prevailed over the the 10k in that women's race. And uh, you've got strength runners in the pack, and you've got kickers. And I would say Chris Derrick is one of those strength runners, being a, a marathoner. Uh, Woody, he's a he's a strength runner, but with deceptive speed. Reed Buchanan, also a strength guy. So when it comes down to and the and the rabbits step off, you got to look for those strength runners to start trying to make a push late. They're going to be the ones to take it. King Chez, King Chez can do he can do anything. <laughs> he can really do anything. He can lead from a long way out. And he, he fancies himself a kicker as well. I mean, nobody wants to say that they don't have the speed at the end. Everybody feels like they do. So it usually comes down to that. But uh, is Mad Mark Scott going to be the one to take down the king today? Or is it going to be somebody else in this lineup? They're all looking pretty steady so far. They're old. Turning off their brains at this point. Six minutes in. It's long still, way to go. It's still really early in. This is a cup of tea for a lot of them yep. out here. Looks like a smooth tempo. Jagger's got the arm sleeves and the headband going. It's a good look. Really a little, good it's work. a little chilly. 55 down there. That's right. Feels yeah. like 55. You got to stay warm. I mean, a few of the guys are rocking some sleeves. Woody, again, like with his mentor, Evan Jagger. He's oh, wearing some man. sleeves too. There's a theme here. There is. Where's the headband though? M maybe. That's the next step. That has to be earned. Oh. Only maybe through. passed down a little bit generation yes if we see a good result here uh for woody in this 10k we might see a crowning of the headband <laughs> okay. on the infield later this evening that would be iconic <laughs> <laughs> we hope courtney white is out there with the big lens yes, for that one. yes and it's still really early on nobody is uh is dropping off at this point nor they sh nor should they uh talking with uh huron olinard Yesterday, uh, he's been training in Flagstaff recently with the king himself, King Cesarek, and he says that Edward Cesarek might be the most talented individual that he's ever trained with, <laughs> and that's coming from a man who's trained with the great, dare I say, Mo Farah, and, and he said the kinds of tempos that the king can just put away, it's, it's unparalleled. The Lake Mary tempos in Flagstaff that King Cesarek has in his training logs i mean i can imagine i mean you, you don't win ncaa 17 times without being talented <laughs> that's a very good point yeah. Emma. it does take some talent if you're going to win 17 national titles in the states i like to see chris derrick up there too looking for a big one from from the man there tonight and he's, uh, his best time in the 10K actually comes from his college days as a Stanford Cardinal. Uh, he ran 27.31 at the Cardinal invite, and that's number 18 on the all-time list for, for the United States. His, his most recent best result in the 10K, I'd say, is in Japan. Uh, he ran a race in November of 2016, and that was 27.38. So he's got it. He's got it in those legs. And we're coming up on 3,200 meters here. And 3,200 meters passed in 848. That's another 66 in the books. So 848. 848 puts us at 2730 for, for 10,000. So they're on, they're on great pace because I imagine that we're going to see some I'm stepping down and in, in splits as we get towards the latter stages of the race. Like once, man, those, once those rabbits step off, you don't know what's gonna happen. Once the rabbits step off, it's it's anybody's game. We here. saw a few lead changes in the women's race. So who's gonna take the lead when the rabbits step off? Who do you think? That's who do I think is gonna jump to the front? Yeah. Here? I honestly I think Mark Scott is gonna You think he's I think gonna, he's gonna stick in the that Spot. You think Mark Scott is gonna he's gonna grind from that far out? I I think he he wants he wants to kick is what I'm thinking, and I would I would bet that somebody like Chris Derrick or maybe Ben True wants to grind it out from from a ways. Ben True guy's got a a big engine. He's a barrel chested individual, <laughs> and 
cut his teeth in the harsh New Hampshire winters. He's a multi-time national champion in cross-country skiing. Wow. And those guys have the biggest VO2 maxes on the planet. So he's not, a, he's not afraid of this 10,000 meters here. I feel like a 10K would be easy compared to cross-country skiing. Yeah, it is. Uh, as a, as a cross-country skier uh, <laughs> myself. And I went cross-country no, no. skiing for the first time a couple of weeks ago. Very hard sport. It is. It's tough. Yeah, it's a very, very difficult sport. Me being a runner myself, cross-country skiing, whole different ball game. Been true. He's, he's a tough individual. Proves it. But his best time is 27.41 in this event, and that was actually set in the same exact race that Chris Derrick set his personal best. Um, ben True is 30th all-time on the U.S. list. Chris Derrick, 18th. So they've got 10 seconds separating them and their personal best. Grant Fisher is another guy. He's another sneaky guy that you have to look out for in this race, I feel like. Uh, the guy's pesky. He hangs around. He's pesky. He's a little stealthy, too. He's you, definitely stealthy. You don't know he's there. Yeah. But he's, he's got some exceptional speed. Ran 336 for the 15 last summer in the BTC Summer Series. Ran 737 in that prickly pear invite for second behind Mad Mark Scott. I mean, he gives me very similar vibes to Elise Cranny. Maybe it's because they both went to Stanford, Cardinals. Oh. But they're both strong, and they've got that speed element to them. Yeah, and he's he's been running at a high level for a long time. The guy broke four minutes in high school, so he's a name that's been on the national stage for a while now. Got a thirteen eleven best in the five thousand meters, and that race particularly, they closed very fast. They closed in a four oh two final mile for that race, one fifty six for the final eight hundred. And Sheesh. talking with Coach Jerry Schumacher afterwards. Uh, he thought 13.05 might have been possible if they jumped on it a bit earlier on. But another, a dip under 66 seconds for that last lap. 65.7 for Evan Jagger up front, looking smooth. The Olympic silver medalist in the steeplechase. Rabbiting duties today. That's, that's what you can do when you have the power of the Bowerman Track Club. <laughs> the red lightning, ladies and gentlemen. Going back to Grant Fisher, no 10K time to his name. No 10K time to his name. This is a debut, like Elise Cranny. Exactly. I mean, those you can throw it in the comments if you know that he's run a 10K road race somewhere, maybe a turkey trout or something. But to our <laughs> knowledge, this is his maiden voyage in the 10,000 meters. Fared well meters. for his teammate Elise. It did. I, it, if, if fate has it, if you believe in that kind of thing. I mean, if I was Grant... And I watched that race before me. I'd be pretty stoked. It's possible. It I'd have confidence. Up, yeah, it opens up a lot of possibilities there. There's magic happening in the brickyard here. Maybe <laughs> lightning strikes twice. Maybe red lightning strikes twice right here in the brickyard. Kuntavate's still in here, too. And he's... Uh, He's got the, the Thai national record in the 10,000 meters, which is 28.45. And he's, a, he's fresh out of, out of Havid. He's a Havid boy. Havid. <laughs> Crimson. That's right. Fight on Havid. Uh, so he's, he's well under his 28.45 pace right now and hanging on to the back of that pack behind Woody Kincaid. And he's hanging in it. He could have a very big night tonight. And a... Uh, in a big splash entering the Bowerman Track Club. Talking with Evan Jagger yesterday, too. Uh, well, actually, I just texted him and I asked him how the boys are looking for tonight. And said, I don't know, Jeff, everybody's fit. Uh, <laughs> Mark obviously ran the best in the 3K, the prickly pair, and he's more of a 5K, 10K guy, so I'd look out for him. Well, that's actually some good advice. Yeah. Very, uh, for us as commentators. Yeah. It's, he's a, we should definitely look out for Mark Scott. We should look out for Mark Scott, I think. Yeah, it seems like Jagger's been around the sport a while. And, uh, I think he he's, knows. He's a master of the Belichickian response, not really given too much <laughs> there. But uh, Coach Jerry Schumacher, famous, famously tight-lipped when it comes to the press, too. So he's been... Uh, That's some insider information. Yeah, he's been under, under his wing for a while. So 
if he if he leaks any kind of information, I would look out for Mark Scott there. <laughs> it looks like Chris Derrick has stepped off. Chris Derrick no longer in the field there. So we'll we'll hope to get more information on that later on, but we'll we'll let you know when we do. Now it looks like Gordy. McGordy's up front. Sean Something McGordy. Another Cardinal. Yeah, we've got a lot of Stanford grads in this field. Got a yeah, got a lot of got a lot of cards in there. Got a lot of cards in got the deck. Got a lot of cards in the deck. Last 5 laps passed in under 66 seconds too. So we had a couple 64s sprinkled in there, 65s. And uh and these boys are stepping down here. They're starting to sniff the finish line a little bit. I mean, we're on the the latter half of the race, the second 5k. Uh Evan Jaggers duties now finished so we've got sean mcgordy up front leading the boys through and mark scott still on his heels and then ben true hanging in there too ben true does not have uh, a race result to his name for 2020 so this is the first one in a while for him maybe he's healing up the bod and getting ready to throw down what an opener this could be a big opener yeah. for him in the yellow out there the yellow vest Pez is also not on the track anymore. The king is no longer in the race, ladies and gentlemen. So that's that's an unfortunate development there. Uh, we would have liked to see him, what he could do out there, but uh, we've got a great field here still in contention. And all of these individuals who are still on the track uh, are well, well under pace. So... It looks like I mean they're still on pace for the for the Olympic standard, which is very impressive. And this is this is the kind of thing that you can get from from ideal pacing like that. Uh, we saw it at the hunt two or two years ago in 2019, where the three athletes who were on the track were still all together with a lap to go, and they were only separated by two seconds at most, which you don't really see that. <laughs> too often <laughs> it was a magical night and, and this one could be another one for the books John McGordy still at the front here and he passes in another 65 65.8 so we saw in the women's race, Courtney Frerichs took him through four miles, so we'll see how far Sean McGordy can get him here. And for those of you out there, if you're a, a big company looking to support the sport, get your name out there, add into the purse. This is how, this is how we build this thing up. Uh, the, I mean, the control is in the fans' hands right now, and the more that we build this purse up, we're going to keep doing these events in the future. We've got another one March 6th, right back here in the Brickyard, it looks Coming like. Coming in hot. 800s, 1500s, 5Ks back on the track, and we're going to build a purse for that too. And if you want to see some of the best athletes line up against each other, keep loading it up because you'll entice them and they'll come out of the woodwork. And that's 1820... Five for four miles there. Oh, excuse me, it is not. 1840 for four miles there. Uh, and that was a 65.5 lap. I misspoke and, and Emma's <laughs> laughing at me here. Uh. If I lie to you, I'll correct the information <laughs> right away. And that's Sean McGordy with his upright running position here. Great form. He looks his arm carriage looks very relaxed, and so do so does Mark Scott, honestly, and and Ben True. I honestly, all six of them, I would say they don't look they don't look strained right <laughs> no, now very nice much at all. Relaxed. Do you have any um, predictions now? Mm. Further into the race, I gotta go with uh, I gotta go with Jagger's prediction. I think. Oh, <laughs> I think he looks strong, but I I want Ben True to mix it up in there a little yeah. bit, and. Uh, yeah, mix it up with the lightning. We got a 66 second 400 meters here. 
66 second circuit. And uh, that's still right on pace, as we said, 65 9 for 27 28. So they're at 1946 for 7200. 1948 is 2728 pace. So, I mean, they're being set on the right track here to get under the standard. But what I'm really interested in is who's going to take this thing in the end and who's going to take that purse. Once Sean steps off, someone's going to throw down. I can sense it. Everyone's being very tame right now. Everyone's relaxed. But it someone's got some extra energy in this group. This this feels very much like a like the brickyard where the pace car is out front in the Indianapolis 500 and everybody's just kind of waiting to let it rip. So when when McGordy steps off the track and anything can happen. We've got that extra gas in the tank. Do we see do we see Tuntivate sprint up from the back take the lead? I don't know. We could see that. That's I could possible. see it. The young buck. The young buck looking to make a name for himself. I mean, we know that uh, the Bowerman Track Club definitely has a plan here. They definitely have a, uh, a strategy. But, as we said, like, late in the race, it's anybody's game. Ben True's mixing it up. All of these men have to be questioning each other's motives right now. I would be. They're all dangerous. These are den dangerous men in the latter stages of a 10K. And if somebody has any... If somebody's feeling any ounce of pain right now, they gotta be feeling a little nervous. About... Hopefully, they're not showing it on their faces. No, you gotta you gotta keep your poker face yeah. on late into this into the race here. Woody looking to swing out a little bit. I don't know if he's just trying to avoid Fisher's back kick or if he's thinking <laughs> about making a move. I here. think he's looking a little antsy. McGordy's stepping off. McGordy's stepping off at eight thousand meters here. All right, here's it, where we're going to see some action happen. 8,000 meters in 2157. What do you think of that? That's fast. A, that's a nice little split there for 8,000 meters. Oh, we've got <laughs> bad boy Mark. Oh, mad Mark Scott gap in the field right away. He was just... <laughs> he was ready he, to go, man. He was chomping at the He's bit. He's got that finger on the gun. He knows, oh, we've got... He is gapping it, and then Grant Fisher is, is trying to close it down on him a little bit. Right now, it's necessary. You got to close that gap. The, he is closing it down a little bit, and then the field follows too. So Mark's Mark Scott trying to get some daylight there, but he's not getting it. Everybody's Great Fisher did back. a good job taking that pack back up, yeah. Mr. Mark. The field owes him a debt of gratitude, I yep. would say. Or a little money out of that prize purse. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, whoever takes it. All right, I will say Grant is looking very good. Grant he looks calm, cool, collected the whole time. Hasn't been pressing, has just been sitting behind Mr. Ben True there, but now makes his way into second place behind Mark. And another six, a 64 second lap there. But we've seen Woody come out of the woodworks. There it is. We've seen Woody do amazing things before. And Woody's got to be confident too. I like, mean, I would be. Like looking at that cabbage that he's got right now. <laughs> he's got to be feeling himself a little I bit. I definitely think it's his hair. He's, he's got a man bun. And he's, he's right in it, too, with the arm sleeves. And now we've got Ben True. And I love to see Ben True up there sitting in right in the center of the, the red lightning train. So he's riding the lightning right now. Not a bad place to be. I like your call with Grant Fisher, though. He could be the Cinderella story here. He could That's be the I'm cranny. Saying. That's what I'm saying. Mark Scott got a little excited, jumped out there. Yeah, he definitely, I mean... Is, he he went off. Is he second guessing things right now, or is he just saying, "Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick to the pace." I think and that he's confident at this moment. Maybe that was intentional. Maybe he's like, "I'm I'm just gonna I'm just gonna let him know Ooh. what I have." Ooh, I can see that. Mm, I like that move. Yeah, scare him a little bit. Yeah, let him know what he's made of. Ooh, yeah. just flash it, guys. All see right. what I have. Grant has taken the lead now. Grant, we have still got a couple more minutes left. That is a bold move, and. Passing Mark. Pat, that's another 65 second lap too that they just they just passed. So Grant Fisher up in front. I'm sure Mark Scott likes this, but they're starting to look a little more. I mean, I see some chest sticking out too. So they're they're looking a little more strained here. All and five Grant, of them though, man. And Grant Fisher looks really good actually. He looks great up front. Coming up on two laps to go and. 
remember what we said here in Tuntave, 2845 best. That's the, the national record in Thailand. He's going to rip that thing apart. It's his own record. He's going to put it way into the stratosphere. Not bad for the rookie. And, and this is anybody's race here with two laps to go. Wow. Look at this. Five men on the track. This is where we're going to see who has that extra speed after grinding it out. The grind house. The grind house in the brickyard. Another 64 second circuit here. And it seems like these men are, are comfortable just, just looking around, eyeing each other. See who brought the, who brought the dynamite to we're this. We're still not seeing much movement here. It's still just very steady. We're no not... one's thrown any bows yet. Nobody's, nobody's no injecting moves. anything too much. We saw a 64 oh, second lap is still the hard. There's about oh, to be some movement here. 600 meters to go. Mark Scott entering the lead once again, passing the bricks. I here. think this is a definitive move, but Grant is not letting him go. When you make a move like that this late in the race, you don't want to give it back. No. Mark Scott does not want to give this up right now. And and Grant Fisher does not want to let go of his this teammate. This is giving me very much Elise Cranny vibes it's right a, here. It's a, similar, it's a similar race. And Kieran Tuntivate. Wow. Sliding up on Ben True with a lap to go. The lap. 26-13. That is a 61-second penultimate lap, ladies and gentlemen. And you guys looked, know how to switch gears. Mark Scott and Grant Fisher have separated themselves from the field. Ben True is going to get a, a PR as well, it looks like, if he can hang on here. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and then Kieran Tuntivate is sliding Ooh, up into third over Ben looks True. Great. And there and goes Woody. Woody Kincaid. Mark Scott driving 200 meters to go. Woody just passed Kieran. Grant Fisher right on Mark Scott's tail. They're giving it this everything they have. This is anybody's race. This is the same. This could be the same outcome as the Prickly Pear 3K. Mark Scott injected a last 227 seconds there. Woo! And they got on the final stretch, and he's got daylight. He's looking back. He's got daylight, and what does it say on the clock? This is big. 2711. Mad Mark Scott. He is now the second fastest British athlete of all time over wow. 10,000 feet. Over 10,000 meters. Second to. Only Mo Farah, ladies and gentlemen. Last split, 57-13. 57-13. That is a 158 final 800 meters for this 10K. Grant Fisher, debut 27-11. Wow. All the guys looking very happy right now with that outcome. 